Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add nameplates to other blueprints. So to get started I'm just going to create a blueprint that we can add our nameplate to. Um, you might already have a blueprint that you have in your project that you can just use but I'm just going to create an um, example blueprint. Um, and I'm going to open that up and I'll just add, um, I'll bring it over here, I'll just add a cube component just so we can see it in the world. I'll move this up a little bit like that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to the components tab and add the nameplate component like that. And we're also going to need to add the actual widget component. So um, we'll select uh, our root and we'll add the widget component like that. Now, if your blueprint has say something that moved around um, inside of it um, and you wanted the widget to follow that uh, component, you'd need to make sure it's a child of uh, that component that's moving around. But because ours is just a cube, I'm just going to use the uh, scene root. So once we add that, we'll just compile. Over here, we're going to set space to screen. We'll set the widget class to uh, one of the floating nameplates. Um, the first one doesn't have a health bar, and the second one does. Um, I'm going to use the second one just so I can show you how to set up the health as well if you want to use that. So I'm going to pick floating nameplate two. The draw size. Um, we're going to actually copy from one of the example cubes. This is the size I recommend for the nameplates, but you can play around with them if you want. So I'm just going to go to um, other nameplate example. We'll select the widget and you can see its uh, default size is 340 by 160. So we can just copy that, go back to our uh, example blueprint, and we'll set the draw size to that. Next, we want to set the pivot uh, to 1 in the Y, like this, and we'll compile that. Now we have to actually set the position that our widget will um, will be in. So I'm just going to move mine above my cube. If you want to, you can move it around however you like. But I'm just going to have my nameplate above the cube. So I'll just position it here. Next, we can set some of the settings in the name, uh, nameplate component. So if we select that, we've got a few different settings here. Um, so we've got hide when no LOS. So this is if um, the player doesn't have a line of sight to the object from their camera. Um, the nameplate will be hidden. So if this is true, then the nameplate will hide when we can't see the actor. Um, down here, we've got a uh, max visible distance. So this will be if your character's um, further than uh, 2000 centimeters, the nameplate will disappear. And obviously to use that value, you need to have um, use max visible distance ticked on. By default, it's set to 20,000 and it is set to being on. Um, and then down here, we've got a few um, customization settings. You can set the um, the, the uh, font sizes, whether they're bold, and you can set the text color. Um, if you are using these settings to control the, the widget, you need to make sure that use component text settings is turned on. If this is false, then just however you have the widget set up, that's what it will look like. But if we have this ticked on, then it will use these settings here. Now, there's not um, all of the different types of settings for the widget here, so these are just some of the basic settings. Um, if you did want to customize the widget uh, further, you would need to go into the widget that you're using that we set over here um, and actually um, adjust it in the widget editor. Next, we need to go to the class settings and in here, we're just going to add the name uh, panel interface. And if we do that and compile, we'll see that we've got some new uh, interface events down here. And this is what basically tells the widget um, the information we want to display. So. Um, for example, the name is the, the main um, text, so this will just be whatever's displayed there. So um, we can turn it on to enabled, so it will be shown, and we can just set this to whatever we want. I can set it to um, just say hello. Um, obviously, if you have some code that names your blueprint, you can hook that up in this uh, function up to the name output, and the widget will uh, use that name output. And then we've got the same thing for the guild. If you don't want to use the guild text at all, you can just leave this empty. But if you did, you can enable that and you can plug in um, some guild text or you can enter some in. So I'll just put um, amazing. Um, next, we need to make sure that show name panel is ticked on. Um, if this isn't ticked on, then the name play won't be visible. Um, then we've got the player ID and replace player name. Um, we don't have to do these, but you may want to set the replace player name to the same as whatever you set the player sorry, the uh, name um, output. So if I go back to the name, we've set ours to hello, so I'll just set mine to hello as well. 
and that's just used or well, this is just used if the player has the uh, replace name option ticked on um, so you can input that here and then player ID we don't need to worry about for uh, our nameplate so we'll just leave that empty so what we'll do is we'll compile and I'll just place my uh, um, example cube which I created here into the level so now we can hit play and we should see that our cube has our uh, nameplate there um, it's displaying hello for our name and then amazing for our guild um, but we don't have a health bar even though we use the widget that does have a health bar and the reason for that is because our cube doesn't have the health component and that's what the uh, widget looks for when it's going to display the health bar so if we go back to our example cube here now I add the health component or the basic health component that comes with the uh, system over here you can just set the max health the current health um, if you wanted to change those and now if we hit play we should see our health bar as well now you may have your own health system for your blueprint um, so I'll quickly show you how you can hook that up in the uh, widget what we'll do is we'll go back to our um, example I don't have any health values but what I'm gonna do is I'll just create a couple so I'll create some new variables I'll call this um, health and I'll call this max health. You will need a max health value um, so the system knows what the max value is. Um, and I'll change these over to integers like that. And we'll tick on so that they're uh, instance editable as well. Now, if you're making a multiplayer game, you need to make sure that these values are replicated because if they're not, then the other clients won't know what the uh, blueprint's health is. So we'll just set this to replicated as well. Like that and now uh, we need to go over to our floating nameplate our two so I'll just search for floating and we can find that there and in here we'll go to graph then to uh, updates and in here is where we set our health text and our health bar amount so we'll start with the health text um, there is some information here as well that you can read through that explains how you can um, get a different blueprints uh, health values um, but what we'll do is I'll um, show you how we can cast to our cube to be able to get those health values if we want to. So we get our nameplate actor and um, you can remove this code if you want to. This is what checks to see if it has a health component. Um, but I'm just going to leave that in because maybe you want to use that. Um, and what we'll do instead is if it doesn't have um, a health component, we'll check to see is it our example cube. Um, and if it is, then we want to get our health values from that instead. So I'm just going to do cast to example from our nameplate actor here. And if not valid, we're going to um, get we're going to cast to our example, and we want to make this a new variable. So we'll do promote variable. I'll rename this to just example. Um, and then what we'll do is we're just going to copy this code here, paste it down here. Oh, we move this. Um, and we can connect this up to here. And then what we'll do is we'll just compile quickly. I'm going to do get example. And here, instead of getting it from our health component, we'll just get it from um, our uh, example um, node. So get health and get max health. And we just get rid of these and we can plug in health and max health here. And then uh, over at the beginning, we want to do an is valid check. So we'll just move it down here. You can spend a bit more time cleaning this up if you want to. Um, but if not valid, we want to check if it has a health component. But if it is valid, we want to connect up to here. Um, and we're going to take our, um, and we're going to get our example, plug this into the is valid. So it checks. Have we already got the um, example reference? If we have, then we can just run this code. We don't have to check anything like this. Um, if our cast fails, then we can just connect this up to down here. Um, if you have other um, blueprint types that have health components, it would just be a case of, again, doing this again, but you would connect it up to the cast failed here. Um, if you have your own health component, um, it would just be a case of changing the um, component class here, changing the type of variable that this health component is to your own one, and then over here you'd have to reconnect up um, your health values into this format text um, but right now we've set it up so now that we're um, if we're uh, if our nameplate actor is an example blueprint so the cube we made um, it will get its health values instead so just to test this out we can go um, to our, our example blueprint now I'm going to delete the health component because if we don't it will just use that so we'll delete that and then I'm going to set my health to say 
uh, 20 and I'll set my max health to 100. So now when we hit play, we should see those values. Oh, my mistake, sorry. We have to do this in the um, health bar amount as well, otherwise um, our health bar won't show up. So we're pretty much gonna do exactly the same thing. Uh, so we'll go to health bar amount. And again, we'll just move this down. We'll copy this. And we wanna drag out, well, we'll copy our nameplate actor. Do cast to example. Connect this up to is not valid. We don't need to create any variable because we already have our example variable. So we can just connect this up here. And we'll plug the um, this up to our branch. If cast fails, then we'll run this code down here. And then lastly, we want to add the is valid here. Check is if the example is valid. If it's not, then we run this code. If it is valid, then we just run the uh, code that we copy pasted. And then we need to um, get our example again. And we just need to hook up the health and max health. So get health and get max health. And we can just plug these in uh, health to the top and max health to the bottom. And now we can compile this. And now when we hit play, we should see our health bar. You can see that it's displaying 20 out of 100 because that's what we set to um, in our example blueprint. So that's pretty much it on how to add uh, nameplates to blueprints and um, how to hook up your own uh, health system. Um, but you may want to also display additional information. So say you wanted to display like a mana bar or something. Um, I can show you how to do that quickly. So to do that, we'll go to our floating nameplate, go into the designer, and I'm just gonna copy the health bar. Um, to do that, I'll copy the size box because that's uh, what contains all of our health bar stuff. Um, and I'll paste into the vertical box because that's where everything's um, a child of. So we'll paste that in and I'm just gonna move it up above our little arrow here. Um, and you can spend as much time as you like customizing it to look the way you want. But I'm just gonna change the color to say like a blue like that. And I'll rename the progress bar to mana. And we'll rename the text here to uh, mana uh, text. Next we'll need to um, create our binds for our uh, health bar and our text. So what we'll do is just over here on uh, percentage, we'll set this to uh, create binding. That'll create us a new uh, mana function. Um, and we'll do the same thing with our text. So I'll just select the text and we'll do bind, create binding. And what we'll do is we'll start by copying um, what our health um, already does. So I'll just copy this code here. This is for our text. So we'll paste this into mana text. Um, like that and we'll connect the beginning node here to the is valid at the beginning we'll just delete this return node because we already have some set up for us now um, obviously right now it's getting the health component and returning the health component um, we don't want that for our mana um, so I'm gonna delete this top part because this gets our health component so we'll get rid of all of this like that now this process is going to depend on um, where you have your mana stored. Um, but I'm gonna assume you have it on your blueprint. So we'll use the same thing we did before. Um, if the example isn't valid, we'll cast to the example. Um, and if that cast succeeds, then we'll um, run the code over here. Now we wanna um, change these to uh, not be our health text, but we want them to be our mana text. So we'll get mana text from the uh, my blueprint panel here. And we'll connect this up here. We'll just copy and paste that over here as well. Now, um, I don't have any mana uh, variables, so uh, we'll create those in a second. But down here as well, we'll need to replace these health text here and here. Um, and what I'll do is I'll quickly go to my example here and just create a mana and a max mana like that. Um, again, these need to be replicated if you want um, other clients to be able to see them. And I'll set the current amount to say uh, 60 and the max to say 100. And then back in our uh, floating nameplate, we can do, uh, we can drag out like we did before and uh, get mana. And we'll plug this into the top and we'll get max mana. And we'll plug this into the bottom 
So that will now set our um, our text for our um, mana bar. Um, now we want to do the same thing, but with the um, mana bar and not the text. So we can just copy this. We'll go over to our mana percent. We'll paste this in. And we'll take the beginning node and connect this up to the front again. We'll delete this return node. Now over here, we want to um, get rid of this format text because we're using um, a float here. And we also need to replace these mana texts with the mana um, bar, which should be here. Yep, mana. And we'll plug these in here and here. And then again down the bottom here and here. Now back over um, where we deleted the format text, we need to divide the current mana. Uh, so divide, float by float, we'll divide that by our max mana, and we'll just plug those into here. And we should be done. So we can compile this. If we save, now uh, compile again, for some reason it came back up. Now if I hit play, you can see that my mana is displaying 60 out of 100, uh, the bar's working, and uh, that's all set up now, so if those mana values were to change, the bar would change as well. Just as a side note, if you did say have um, a mana component instead of just having the mana var uh, variables directly on your blueprint, then you would do the same thing that um, I already do with the health uh, system. So if you just take a look at the health bar amount, for example, we just get the nameplate, check if it has, say, your mana component, you want to make sure it's valid, and then you want to set um, your mana component up. You want to have an is valid to check if it is um, already set. If it is, then you would just continue the code with your mana component instead of the health component. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you've uh, learned a little bit more about the nameplate system and how you can use it. Thank you for watching.